I'm going on a travel by glider adventure. Three friends and I will fly from Northern to Southern California. Everything was going great until we were blocked by a wall of rain. Things sure looked hopeless for a while. Did we make it to our destination? Join me on this flight to find out. Welcome back, pilots. Today I'm traveling by glider from Hollister to Warner Springs in California. It's a straight line distance of 558 kilometers. We have a rare weather setup that should allow me to fly south to Warner Springs one day and back north to Hollister the next. Last week, my buddy Philip, also known as Orange Pants on YouTube, messaged me about doing this travel by glider flight to Warner Springs. I said, awesome, have fun. I'm not gonna do a long trade out like that without ground crew. We call that crewless and clueless. If you land out far away, you're on your own. A few hours went by, and then the FOMO started to get to me. The forecast looked incredible, and we we're starting on a Friday, coming back on a Saturday, which gives us an extra day to get home in case something goes wrong. I finally messaged him back and said, I'm in. Two other friends decided to join us, Rami in Tango Golf and Darren in Uniform 2. These are two really experienced glider pilots and that gives me confidence that we'll make it all together as a team. Philip decided to launch from Avenal, which is about 60 miles south of Hollister. We'll spend the entire flight trying to catch up to him. We launched at 11.30 into initially blue conditions. You can see there's some clouds in the distance to the south, but our first couple of climbs are gonna be in the blue. It took some searching, but I finally find a decent climb, and Uniform 2 joins me. We finally get high enough to connect with the first clouds. This one in front of me I can see growing, so I know it will have a fresh thermal under it. We're making our way south along the San Benito mountain range. This is familiar territory to us, and we know there are often strong thermals here. We've got good clouds ahead, and we can start covering ground at a fast rate. The climbs are getting stronger as we stair-step up to cloud base. I dial in McCready 4 and put the nose down. It's time to go fast. There's only sparse wispies ahead, but they're marking the location of the convergence which is usually in play above these mountains. I'm connecting the dots between these little clouds, not because I need to climb, but because I want to stay in the strongest convergence. Despite my high cruise speed, I'm achieving 53 to 1 on this glide thanks to the convergence. I took a slightly different line than the other guys. There's so many little clouds everywhere that there was no clear best route to take. They took a short climb along the way, and so did I, and we converged back together at about the same altitude. We're approaching Black Mountain near Avenal, and there's good clouds here, but the bases are lower, so we're too high to take advantage of them. We're about to start a notoriously difficult transition over the low ground between two mountain ranges. There's a good looking line of clouds in the distance, but there's not much between here and there. Fortunately, there are a few wispies which are marking the convergence line, and that's what we'll follow. The thermals under these little clouds are cycling fast. This one in front looks pretty good, but as I get closer, I can see it's already decaying and I give up on it. When the clouds are cycling fast like this, the key is to spot a new one that's just forming. This little guy just appeared and should have a fresh thermal under it. It turns out to be weaker than I'd like, but it's a good idea to stay high in this area because there's not a lot of good landing options around. While I was climbing the last thermal, I saw that this bigger group of clouds was forming nearby, 
so I went over there in hopes of a stronger climb. Sure enough, it's got a boomer under it, and we climbed to over 9,000 feet, which is pretty good for this area. We survived the transition over the low ground, and now we're arriving at the La Panza range. There's a great looking line of convergence driven clouds here. This highway will take us all the way down to the mountains that separate California's Central Valley from Southern California. We finally reached New Kuyama, a tiny little airport in a farming valley. This is usually our turnaround point for the 500k milk run at a Hollister. I've never been further south than this, so this is going to be new territory for me. I take one more good climb before I set off on another transition, across a blue gap toward Mount Pinos. I have two options here. I could take a detour out to the right toward the bigger clouds. Or I could cut straight across this blue gap to some less good looking clouds. The other pilots took the detour to the right and I went straight. It really isn't far to the next clouds, but they don't look great. And when I get there, I find that they're not working. I keep pushing ahead, but I'm going into rising terrain and my only good landing option is currently behind me. And it's quickly going out of range. I won't be able to keep going in this direction for long. I need to find a climb soon. Letter seven's about 12 miles west of Mount Pinos, 9,600. That's it. I can't keep going forward. I'll make a 90 degree turn to the right, towards some fields, and the best looking cloud around. I'm starting to get a little bit desperate, and I'm grasping at every little hint of lift that's around. A lot of the ground is shaded here, so I'm going to try heading to a place where there's sun on the ground. I finally find something worth circling in. Just as the other guys who took the longer route are catching up with me. This tough transition isn't over yet though. We're entering an area of high terrain, dark skies, and few landing options. I'm going to be less picky about my thermals in this area. I'll take what I can get so I can stay high. In the distance on the right, you can see the greater Los Angeles area and the Pacific Ocean. In the distance on the left, you see the Mojave Desert. If I get low here and have to choose, I'm going to turn towards the Mojave Desert. There would be a better chance of finding a thermal for a low save out in the Mojave. 
We all take short climbs near Pyramid Lake, which improves our chances of reaching good landing options in the Mojave. We made it through the hard part and the sky ahead looks great. It's time to dial up the Mercredi and put the nose down. The next climb is a boomer and we're back to having fun again. The radio gets quiet because there's nothing to talk about when the going's fast and easy like this. We quickly reach Mount Baldy, a major Southern California landmark. Now I've got my bearings again because I flew this route last year in the Dust Devil Dash. That time I got low after crossing the pass from Mount Baldy to Big Bear. But today it looks like that won't be a problem. What might be a problem is the overdevelopment we can see ahead at Big Bear. There are some tall clouds and lots of them. That tells me we might have to deal with some precipitation soon. In the distance, I see a wall of rain blocking our path. The usual route would take us over San Gorgonio in the distance here. But the clouds are too low over the mountaintop for that to work. The only option is to take a detour far around to the left. We can't see what lies beyond this wall of raining clouds, but we're going to find out. We hear on the radio that Philip is struggling to climb in the darkness ahead. So we scratch up every bit of altitude we can before making the dive under this curtain of Virga. On the other side, I find myself low over Joshua Tree. The sky does not look good here. Our destination, Warner Springs, lies beyond the next two mountain ranges. Getting over those mountains with the sky looking the way it does seems hopeless. I attempt to circle in some weak lift, but then Darren announces that he's climbing. I spot him on farm and head in his direction. Hope your thermal's working. Could there really be a thermal coming from these completely shaded hills? If not, my journey will be ending at Palm Springs and the valley to the right. That thermal just saved the day. Team flying is so helpful in situations like this. Thanks to Darren for finding that thermal. not home for yet, but we're high enough to reach the next set of good looking clouds. One more climb ought to put us on final glide to Warner Springs.
We all made it by the skin of our teeth. What an amazing adventure. Big thank you to Zach and the other Warner Springs pilots who were so welcoming and hospitable. Thanks to Sky Sailing for the tows and the use of their awesome crew car. We used it to get to a nearby hotel for a much needed rest. We were lined up to launch as soon as the queue started popping the next day. Stay tuned for a video of the flight back coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.